focused population, like, oh, I'm counting my macros, am I getting enough protein? We oftentimes neglect our micronutrient needs, which is what's really important for us for healing, for recovery, and um, for our overall long-term health. So this is gonna have tons of fruits and vegetables that are just kind of crushed up and thrown in there with it. Um, I also brought another one, and this is a product, you know, off with the uh, athletes that I work with, this is, I'm not pushing their product, but it's a good product because it has a nice blend of simple carbs for recovery, and it also has a whey protein isolate in it. Um, so with the athletes that I work with at Barwis, after their workouts, they're all drinking this. The other thing that's important is to find one that's been third-party tested because a lot of protein powders out there will have a proprietary blend, so you don't actually know exactly what you're getting. So when things are um, third-party tested, they have an NSF label, so the athletes that are getting are drug tested have to use products that are obviously NSF certified. So this happens to be one of those products. So this is another... So what's that, B BM? This is Barwis Method, so you can get this right at the facility, which is at M14 and Sheldon. Or you can, it's all 60% off right now, actually, online, which is a really good deal. So this bag of proteins, I think about $30 right now, which is really cheap. Um, and then the other product that they have there that's a newer one is this Revere. I don't know if you've seen this kind of go through your Facebook feed. I feel like it always goes through mine probably because I'm connected with Barwis. But this is a plant-based uh, protein powder that they have. And these are an individual, which are nice for portability factor. And they have um, added tart cherries, um, some vegetables to their products as well, just to kind of also <coughs> tap into those micronutrient needs. So this is another pretty good product that would be a vegan you know, version or a plant-based version of a protein powder. Um, but really, when you're looking to buy a protein powder, find one that doesn't have a ton of ingredients in it. Again, sometimes when you go into GNC, they recommend whatever they're probably going to make the most money on. <laughs> <laughs> Someone is really I like hungry it. right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Open it up and have, you know, try it if you want. <laughs> Other than the lucky charms. Lucky charms. <laughs> Pass those here, the lucky charms. <laughs> Um, so when you're choosing a protein powder, find one that just has very simple ingredients. Again, you don't need all the extra stuff that they often add into it. Um, another product that I really like is J. Rob Protein. So his, is, he's got an egg white, and then he also has a whey protein. And his has just real simple ingredients, so it's a real clean product. The sweetener that they use in those uh, protein powders is stevia. So that's a natural sweetener. Not everybody loves stevia. Um, but it is from at least a, a natural source, which is from a leaf, uh, versus artificial sweeteners. The product that they carry at Costco called Orgain, I think is the name of it. Um, they have a whey and they also have a, a plant-based one. I tried that and it's pretty good. They have erythritol in it though, and that one does not agree with my guts. And for a lot of people, they're sensitive to that particular ingredient. So if you try a protein powder and it doesn't sit with you, Take a look at the ingredient list and see what exactly is it that's in that product that maybe isn't, isn't settling well with you. Um, all right, so let's go into this. So this is a six-pack bag. Has anybody, anybody heard of these bags? It's a food bag. Is that Here's, how we get a six-pack? What's that? Yes. <laughs> you start carrying your food in one of these things. You put it in there. Um, <laughs> oh, got a six-pack. You know you're a serious foodie when you're carrying all your food with you. Um, but I, I feel like I live out of my car. I'm at a fire station for 24 hours, so I do carry my food with me all the time. And it's a really good mindset to get into because we need to be fueling ourselves. You know, I always say if people would eat like diabetics, we'd be a healthier population. What do diabetics do? They eat all day long. Um, and on top of that, they're always focusing on less sugar, and they're focusing on getting enough protein and enough fiber to keep their blood sugar steady throughout the day. Well, us as athletes, we need to eat that exact same way. So it becomes like a constant you know, buffet for us throughout the day in order to fuel ourselves properly. Um, so this bag, this is a briefcase, which it looks a little different than some of the other bags. You can get cute ones that look like purses. If you were interested in the bag, there's, I have a discount code for these two. Uh, when you check out at Special 20, that would get you 20% off a bag. But these are just a glorified cooler and a way to keep yourself organized with your food. Um, so in the morning, a lot of times what I pack or what I eat, what's that? I was just like, check that out. I've yeah. never seen that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so the reason I bought this bag is because I was doing some traveling for, for this nutrition stuff. And I bring this with me on the airplane. And you go right through the, the, uh, 
what do you call it? Security without a problem. As long as you don't bring a yogurt. They, they've confiscated my yogurt twice. Um, and they'll let you put yogurt in one of these. It's fine. But if it's in a package, they get rid of it. Um, so, Oh, and a blender ball. That won't go through either. Um, but for oftentimes, I, I make overnight oats. Has anyone tried overnight oats? Yeah. I take a blender ball all the time. I don't have a problem. I haven't really? taken a Nutribullet because the blades aren't sharp. They, they'll take like, like that go through too. Yeah, they've confiscated my blender really? ball. Yeah, I think I have one. You're on their list. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that moon girl, there she comes. <laughs> Every time I take this on Charlie, my husband's like, don't bring that food bag. You slow us down. I'm glad you said that about yours. Okay. Like, you shake your yogurt. They take it. Oh. You shake your yogurt. Yeah, they'll take it. They won't take it. Yeah. yeah. So overnight oats are kind of like making a smoothie. You can, you can pack a ton of nutrition into these. And it's a really solid breakfast or snack. Um, so for my overnight oats, I always use just plain old oatmeal, dump it in here. Then I, use, I choose to use almond milk instead of regular milk. Once again, it just settles better with my stomach. Oftentimes I'm adding protein to whatever it is I'm putting with the milk. So I'm not missing out on my protein source, which is the problem with plant-based milks. And you're still getting calcium because it's three times the amount of calcium in a plant-based milk versus a dairy milk. So I used almond milk in here. I put a half a scoop of my protein powder in here because I'm always trying to get a little more protein on board, which is why it looks a little green because there's the greens in there. Um, then I always add a fresh fruit, right? We're looking for those antioxidants and those anti-inflammatories and that comes from a variety of fruits and vegetables. We want 10 to 13 different fruits and vegetables a day. That seems like a lot, but when you throw a greens powder into your stuff, you know, right away you're getting like three or four then you throw berries on top, now you're up to five, and you're just at breakfast still. I always throw chia seeds in here because, you know, chia goes in everything. Um, and then I put cinnamon, I topped it with some hemp seeds. So this breakfast is going to be a filling, and it's going to last me for a long time. It's also full of all those complex carbs and a wide variety of the micronutrients. So we have to shift our focus to getting more micronutrients in order to uh, be most efficient with our bodies and also to avoid those diseases that we've talked about in the long term and also for recovery, which is so important. So this is a pretty solid breakfast. You can warm, oh, I did put some maple syrup in there too. Um, you can warm this up, you can eat it cold, but it's a really nice way to prep ahead of time so you can make three or four of these, throw them in the fridge and now you're set to go. And they travel well, so you can eat it in the car, whatever it might be. All right. Another thing I use quite often, just because it's light on my stomach and I like to have it, because it's got nut butter on it, right? I feel like anything that nut butter goes on makes it delicious. Um, I use rice cakes just because I like that they're crunchy. So I'll take the rice cakes, I put some nut butter on it, I sprinkle some chia seeds on it, I sprinkle some cinnamon on it, and then I usually cut a banana up and throw that on top of it. So something like this might be something I'd eat on the car, in the car on the way here to work out. Um, or I might have it at three o'clock when I'm having a, a craving for a snack. So we're getting some good fats, we're getting some protein, and a little bit of the carbs. All right, see in this part up here is where all the goodness is, right? So there's just all Pretty kinds good. of snacks up here too. Yeah, it's a six pack bag, right? Right? <laughs> 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 well, you know, Quite honestly, I work tomorrow, so I thought well, I'm just going to pack my food for tomorrow. Now, I don't eat quite all of this, but I like to have options <laughs> when I'm stuck there for 24 hours. So this part will be gone, and this, some of it will and some of it won't. But I just packed a lot of it just to show you some different ideas. So it's awesome. part of my business also is I, I own a food prep business, and so I partnered with a chef. It started out where I was just cooking for a few of my friends. Mo and I were cooking in my kitchen. It was crazy. Um, because I had a couple of friends that were doing physique competitions and they didn't want to prep their food in front of their daughter, which is a really good idea not to do that because you're weighing and measuring and it can create all kinds of issues. So we started prepping for them and then from there, just from word of mouth, it grew into a bigger project. So we needed to be legitimate and on the up and up. So we got a commercial kitchen, I partnered with a chef and now we do food prep for people. So we have a website. I'm not trying to sell my business, but it is sort of yeah, cool good. for people who yeah, are busy, awesome. right? Yeah, we love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, flat out. The nice thing about it is that all of our food is 100% organic, on down to the spice blends, because there was obviously a demand for that. And my chef also cooks all gluten free. She has a gluten intolerance, um, so we use a lot of complex carbs and whole grains. So we use quinoa, bean based pastas, all kinds of things, but it is all gluten free, um, which is nice because you can be guaranteed that you're getting those complex carbs in a different form. Anyways, 
Um, so we do post the menu every week and you can order food off of that and then the pickup place is at Bartwitz Methods just because it's really convenient. They have someone that's at the desk from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. and people can go pick their food up there anytime throughout the day on Monday. That's awesome. Um, so it is. It's a, it's a cool little thing and like I said it didn't start out with the intention of becoming a business but it grew because people just flat out are busy and don't have time to prep their food. So we prep food. I write my macro plans for people and then Christy, my chef, will cook based off that macro plan for people. So some people get breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Some people just order a lunch every day. Um, we cook, currently we're cooking for Chris Osgood, which is pretty cool, you know, because he's cool. got, he was trying to lose a certain percentage of body fat, which he's done really well. But we've prepped all his food for him for like the past eight weeks. Um, so we've gotten some really fun clients in that, in that manner as well. Um, but like I said, if you want to check it out, it's stockthepantry.com, S-T-O-E-C-K thepantry.com um, but anyways it's just if you if you're in a bind with food it's a quick and easy way to do it so this food was actually prepped by Christy and I thought I'd bring it just to show you um, is that how it comes to like all in to it, go and it comes like or it depends on the menu well a lot of times too what's that so you probably have to buy the bag separately no, I know we should offer the bags. I mean, people should pay me commission. I mean, I'm always selling these darn bags and they don't give me a thing for it. Um, but anyways, no, it comes in pre-portioned containers. You can also order family style. So we had a demand for people who not only wanted to feed themselves, but wanted to feed their family. So we also offer all, anything on the menu can be made family size portion, so it'll feed four. Sometimes individuals order that and just separate it out themselves for their food prep for the week. The other thing to keep in mind is that anything that's not on the menu, if you have preferences. We cook for people who are following Whole30. We cook for uh, vegetarians. Um, really, we're not a big business, so if you have a certain preference, we'll accommodate that as well. So we can just, whatever. Okay, so this is a breakfast hash and eggs that she made. Mm. So she's always trying to make things um, as colorful as possible. Obviously, we focus a lot on getting our micronutrients in, too, through our food. Um, so because so many of the athletes that we cook for, oftentimes they come in from out of town at Bar West, and so they have no food. So we prep all their food for those athletes, too, that come in. Um, eggs are a big thing. So we cook a lot of eggs. Um, these are egg cups, and these are so easy to make at home. So basically, you take your muffin pan, you give it a spray of oil, or use the uh, silicone muffin cups, and then you break an egg into each one, and then you just bake it. You can put seasoning on there, which she does, or you can just leave it plain, and it's a nice way to make hard-boiled eggs and prep it ahead of time. Uh, so... That's what we've got here is egg cups. And then with the breakfast hash, all that is is some sweet potatoes that are cut up. I'm freezing, so my voice is shaking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I feel like I should jump up and down. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm fine, really. <laughs> um, and then we cut up some... Um, so our, basically, what she did was she took a whole bag of the cruciferous blend from Trader Joe's which has cabbage and kale and all different things in it. She dumped that in the pan, mixed that all together, and now we've got a nice blend of a ton of different micronutrients along with the complex carbs of the sweet potatoes and then some protein from the egg. So this would be a nice breakfast, uh, but you could obviously make it right at home too. Yeah. And you could prep that all ahead of time. I added a little bit of chicken to it just because I had some chicken. And then she made this uh, sweet potato, or not sweet potato, these are stuffed acorn squash. So she basically, we use a lot of carbs, uh, our veggies as carb substitutes too. So we use spaghetti squash, we use a lot of cauliflower rice. Um, just always trying to think of ways to get more vegetables into our system. Um, and then she stuffed it with a steak chili. Um, so something like this, you could get chicken instead of the steak as well. Um, but just another way to get a ton of micronutrients in and not so much in the simple carb department. So this would be a dinner. It looks a lot prettier when she has it as a nice little package too. Oh yeah, and the other thing, uh, when I get that question a lot. When you look at our website, you'll see a regular portion, then an athlete portion. For a dollar more, you get a, a considerable larger volume of food because we were cooking for athletes that were originally were ordering our food. Like, there's not enough in here. But it was, in our regular portion, you get four ounces of meat, a cup of a complex carb, and then always a cup of a vegetable, which is a pretty good volume of food. But because some of the athletes had higher needs, obviously, like, we want more food. So we do that too. All right. And then in the snack portion, let me just run through. 
So yogurt. Yogurt's like cereal, right? You walk into the grocery store, there's a whole aisle of yogurt. Which ones are good and which ones are not so good? Um, the ones that I like are going to have adequate protein and don't have a lot in the sugar department. So I've narrowed that down to about two. So Phi A is great. There's 24 grams of protein in one of these little containers, but it's plain. So you have to add some flavoring to it if you don't enjoy the flavor of just plain old yogurt. Um, so I always add some granola. So the granolas that I brought, whoops, are these. Veronica is one of my favorites, yeah. low in sugar. So about five or six grams of sugar in here. Uh, this is a new product. Has anyone tried this from Trader Joe's? Mm -hmm. It's like crap. It is. <laughs> Once you open it, you gotta measure it out, otherwise you'll eat the whole bag for sure. Mm -hmm. um, they've added pea protein to it, so it's got some protein in the granola, uh, but it is amazing. Um, so something like that would be great. This is another one I found at Fresh Time that only has uh, five grams of sugar in it. Um, and this is coconut almond granola. So oftentimes I'll combine that with my yogurt and make a nice snack or else some fresh fruit would be good in there too. The other one that I really like is Okios Triple Zero. Has anyone tried that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that one's got 12 to 15 grams of protein in it. It's sweetened with stevia and doesn't have any other added sugars to it. So that's another good one. Um, How do you feel about honey? Honey is great. So honey is like pure maple syrup. I just encourage you to stay away from the white sugar. So coconut sugar. <laughs> I feel like I should open that and let you snack on it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> when you go to the bathroom, I'm taking you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Back well, to the grocery store. You're going to have to catch it. Yeah, I feel like you're fast. <laughs> okay, so another great snack is a banana with peanut butter. So once yeah. again, I'm always like, what's that? Yay. <laughs> Um, I like these Justin's peanut butter. I go for portion control with peanut butter because I you know I, you can really mm. overdo it in the peanut butter or nut butter department. But you know, just eating a banana and lopping that on there, that's another good snack. Uh, they have these Jif to go, so an apple with peanut butter is also another good snack. Um, these are nice, although Jif is not the best peanut butter. The Jif natural is a little bit better, but for convenience sake and portability, these are fine. This is still gonna be the best option. Barney's has another one that's like this and you can get almond butter or whatever it might be. But that's another good snack. Um, another good website for uh, recipes is The Minimalist Baker. I make a lot of her recipes as well. This just happens to be a muffin that I made. I put some pumpkin seeds on top. Um, but these are just apple muffins. So if you make your own muffins, this is another great, great snack for you to have with you or to carry with you. Um, and that was from her, her recipe. Um, so the trail mix I was talking about, a lot of times I make my own trail mix. I use that puffin cereal. I throw some seeds in here. I chose pumpkin seeds because they're available right now. And then I usually put some dried fruit in there. And oftentimes when I was doing long rides on my bike, I would carry trail mix just because it wouldn't melt. And you were getting some simple carbs from the dried fruit, um, some good fats and a little bit of protein, and then a little bit of the cereal because it's easier on your stomach. Um, so something like this is good to carry in the car or to just have with you on the go. And then these two little things I really like. So this is holy guacamole. I was talking about the guacamole being, you know, a good source of the fat. This is a product that I get this at Costco already portioned out, ready to go. I can put it on top of my eggs in the morning. I put it on my salad, whatever it might be. Hummus is the same way. So hummus is really easy to go overboard on, but it's a great source of healthy fats and it's a great source of protein. So combining this with some vegetables or using this as a salad dressing is another great idea or as a spread on a sandwich. This would be good for that too. And these are, Costco has an organic one that's portioned out and ready to go too, which is really nice. These kind bars I like, but I like them with some peanut butter on top of them or some nut butter. So I use this almost similar to a rice cake. I try and bulk it up a little bit more than just this plain old little, basically a carb source. And then, I brought these two bars, but we already talked about these bars, so the RX and the Zing bars. So any questions on that? So you can see throughout the day, it's fueling all day long, every couple hours, really, we're eating something um, in order to be most efficient. What about during your race? Yeah, so Why during the race. So that's got to be something that you practice with, right? Right, but I'm just thinking most of that stuff isn't convenient to have on you when you're racing. Right. So what what do you recommend? or what? Well, I recommend you use the gels and the goos and the things that you're used to. I know, I know, I used to use Cliff Shots. I thought, at the end of my Ironman, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm never eating another one. 
um, because you get that gloss on your teeth and everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's really got to be a later. personal preference. Sometimes Honestly, the trail mix is okay, you know, to carry with around. you. Um, the nut butters are okay to carry with you. And then obviously the mo majority of it is going to come through the drinks. And when I was looking, so I went to the Tri Store the other day just to make sure I knew about some of the products that were available. They all have a ton. They're all, they're based with maltodextrin, which is like the cheapest form of sugar you could buy. And I know it's like easily absorbed, but like it's, it's like one of the worst ingredients when you look at ingredients that are not good for you to have. Um, and even the Gatorade Endurance, and I think they've revamped that recipe to where it's not quite as sugary and it's a little bit easier on your stomach. But the second ingredient in that is the maltodextrin all over again. So I think you have to just try and find something that works for your system. Um, the Nun is a good, have you guys tried these? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is probably my favorite product, even as a exchange for uh, Gatorade. Um, but once again, um, at least the ingredients are, are solid in here. But yeah, you've got to think about the chews. What's bad about the Maltodextrin? So it's just a really cheap ingredient. So it's a transporter, right? So, I mean, but what's bad about it? You said it's really bad for you, so. Well, it's bad for you in terms of it's a low quality ingredient. So I always think of the long-term effects. So what does it have and uh, how will it affect our body in the long-term? I guess we don't really know, um, but it would be similar to the high fructose corn syrup. It's just a low quality ingredient that we're choosing to use as a fuel for our body. Um, so I think sugar in its most natural form would be a better source of that. Um, and I'm not sure why all the, pro I, I, from the reading that I've done, the reason they use it is because it's so easily absorbed in your system. And so for your GI stuff, people, you know, it agrees with people's stomachs. I've heard it also helps get into your system faster. Right, so it's, yeah. it's more readily uh, utilized, yeah. right. Um, but I think you just have to find a product that, that sits well with your guts. <laughs> um, that's obviously the main thing. And then a lot of them have caffeine in it too. Um, so that's a personal preference, I feel, too, if you're using a product that has caffeine in it. Um, you know, the, sometimes that's upsetting to people's guts as well. Um, but during the race, I'd probably rely on the bars. Um, maybe making my own energy bites would be another thing that you could carry those with you. Um, so at least you know everything that's in there and it's something that you've practiced with. Um, and then the, the gels and stuff. I know there's just very limited options between the drinks and the, the gels. Yes, yes. Where do you get the Where do you get the bag? This bag I ordered it online, um, and it's from sixpackbags.com. And use special twenty when you check out, and they'll get you twenty percent off. I'm sure they're probably doing other deals through the holidays too. Use twenty. Uh, special twenty. Special twenty. Yes. What was hey, your question? I'm waiting for you to clarify. Is it spelled out? So you aren't really or? a fan of actually eating. Workout. Absolutely, I am. Yes. Now that's a challenge for you guys when you're working out at three or four in the morning or whatever it might be, because optimally you want your fuel to go on board about two hours before. So you'd have to wake up at two in the morning to get off, start eating or something. Um, so that's five just, minutes before I get to my car. Right. So that's not, just not doable. It depends on the um, how much exercise you're going to be doing too. So if you're going for an hour ride or run or something like that, then it's not um, essential that you do it. Um, but I would still suggest you have something, a half a banana, something to just to kind of get your motor going. Um, if you're gonna be doing an extended training session, so if it's you know beyond two hours, then you're gonna wanna obviously be fueling throughout as well. Um, and then if you're going beyond three hours, then it's almost double your needs for how many calories you should be consuming while you're training. Um, because your body can only store so much, right? And after that, we're going to be depleted. So we have to continuously resupply our glycogen stores. And the way to do that is to fuel with carbs throughout our workout. So it all depends on how long of a training session you're going to be doing too. But if you can just get a little something on board, just to, like I said, get things going, um, and then bring some along with you. The most important part though is obviously the recovery. And that's going to start the second you finish whatever it is you're doing. Um, and that's why I'm going to demo a smoothie because I feel like one of the quickest and easiest ways for you to get that recovery going is with a drink. And it's portable. It's something you can make the night before and bring with you. Um, and it's what we, at the gym, we, we do it with the athletes immediately when they're done. We have a, a Vitamix and we make their smoothie. Hmm. Um, but a smoothie is a nice way to get a ton of nutrients in as well. And I'm going to show you Do some of the ones that I brought um, that are really good for recovery. Does everybody have a, yeah. So 
with recovery, I, I, I struggle with this because you know if you're only going for you know an hour or you're doing sort of a quick workout where you're not really going you know all out. All out so you, how much are you, you know, from a recovery standpoint, how much are you eating? So like if I go and I just say, I'm gonna go do a 5K run today just to, you know, get out, do something, whatever. Am I needing to like have a recovery after that? Or is, to me, I just think of that as being extra calories, but do I need, yeah, because you're not doing like a lot, you know, you're doing a half an hour run and maybe some stretching and, you know, whatever. Does, do you need a recovery after that? Or is, are you fine to just- In my opinion, yes, you still need recovery after that. You could incorporate it into your day as part of your meal plan, which is probably what I would do for something like that. And that's what I do with my own personal, like my smoothie is either a post-workout smoothie recovery or else it becomes my lunch. Um, so you could, you could do it that way, but I still feel that it's important even on a lighter workout day. And I'll explain it as we go along with some of the things that I'm putting in it. And you'll see why I feel it's still important because even on an off day, you still wanna be fueling, you know, if you're, if you're doing nothing in terms of exercising and training, you still wanna kinda of keep your calories about the same because you're in recovery for the following day and the following workout when it might be a little bit more intense. And, and what's the timing? Like if, you know, if you come back from your workout and you're, you know, is it like a half an hour after? Can you wait and shower, get yourself changed or whatever, and then an hour later have your recovery? Is there, is there a timing? Like yeah, so you want your your recovery drink or food to come in within the hour. What I encourage is immediately with a protein and carb source. So that's why the smoothie is going to be a good option. And then an hour later, then you can have that on your ride home. Excuse me. And then when you get home, take a shower, then have a meal. Uh, but you want something on board, especially if it's a really intense workout, excuse me, within, I would say 20 minutes. And then from there, you can kind of play around with when your meal's gonna come. Um, what happens if you don't? If you don't, Just then it's probably it. gonna have your an effect on your next workout. So like today, when we've all sat here instead of eating. I know, all right. Just get us a little energy bite. <laughs> yeah, energy bite. Have have those balls. I we're should have done the smoothie first, right? And opened up some snacks and sent them around. Right, four hours and we sit and do nothing. <laughs> Um, one thing that I brought just to show you, you know, um, chocolate milk is always an option, right? So it's quick and easy. This Fair Life is a popular brand right now. It has a little more protein in it, um, but it's portable. So something like this, if you don't have time or you don't want to, you know, blast the whole family out of the house in the morning by running your Vitamix at the hour that you guys get up, then this would be okay. Um, these Naked Juice, I don't encourage these. These are deceiving. They're green and look delicious. Um, but just this juice alone has 400 calories in it, which are going to be low quality calories. And then there's also 60 grams of sugar in this. So That's I mean, like, these are very deceiving. So be cautious when you're buying these ready made instead of making your own. So this is another one. These are always on sale, I feel like. But this would be something you can carry with you. This doesn't even have to be refrigerated, although I'd recommend it for taste. And then. These OKOs, uh, this is the triple zero kind of ready-made thing. So things like this you can take with you, and this could be something you get on board really quick, and then when you get home, have some food. Um, but when I make a smoothie, which I'm gonna make here, I always use, like I said, almond milk, just because I'm adding protein powder to it. I guess that is better. Um, <laughs> you don't need to see the buttons, I guess. Um, so I use this because I like the flavor of it. So the vanilla unsweetened is gonna add a little bit of flavor. So I put, I'm gonna pour it into this blender ball, but I'm not gonna do that today because everybody's gonna have a sample if they'd like. So I'll make Almond a little bigger feels one. like you're cheating. It it's does so feel good. like you're cheating. Yeah. Like, oh, but you're, know. you know, know. you're still cheating, getting some but. calcium in there. It really feels and if you cheating. get the unsweetened, there's not any added sugar either, so. What about coconut milk? Same deal, yeah. same deal. So just get the unsweetened. Otherwise, if it tastes too good, you probably have the sweetened, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, my um, neighbor's doctor said if it tastes good, it's good enough. Right. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. Yeah. Okay, so I always add a scoop of protein powder to it. So this is the vegan one, like I said. And then um, I add fresh berries to it because I'm always trying to get those antioxidants in there, right? 
And then the other thing is it makes your smoothie delicious. So these are mulberries. Mulberries are really powerful antioxidants, but I get the huge bag from Costco of the triple berry mix generally. Um, so I'm going to add all of these to it. <laughs> Run your food stocker. <laughs> all his camera pictures. It's like going grocery shopping when you're hungry, probably. You're like hungry, one of those Chinese guys good. coming to another country. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the other thing I always add to my smoothie is cherry juice concentrate. Anybody drink cherry juice concentrate? You do. I should have cherry known. Cherry concentrate. Okay. I didn't know it was good for you. It's so good for you, yes. So I use it to clean the pipes. The what? <laughs> it's through drains. It does? I don't know. I'm going to have to add that to my talk. Um, so this is from a cherry orchard up in Traverse City called King's Orchard. I order it by the, by the box bowl. Um, I use this every day because it's good for inflammation, right? So I always feel like I feel like I'm constantly inflamed. So what could go wrong with adding it to the to the smoothie? But it's also a really great post recovery drink. So if you just wanna, does anybody here go to drought and get those nice glass bottles that they have? No, anybody been to drought juice? You haven't paid ten dollars for your juice <laughs> for the glass bottle. Um, well, you can use a mason jar, but you can just mix it with water and drink it too. It also has melatonin, which is a natural sleep enhancer, right? So if you have trouble sleeping, sometimes this can help with sleeping too. Um, actually, the Red Wings drink this immediately when they get off the ice. They always have a cherry juice. Well, they put it in their smoothie too, but um, they have a post-recovery drink. As soon as they get off the ice, they have cherry juice in it. Then they drink a um, organic cold press juice, so something similar to the drought because they're getting that, that just surge of all those antioxidants from the juice. Um, and then I'm also going to add two other things to it. I add that to yogurt. Yes, this is great. It's a yogurt. Recovery. Yogurt, vanilla, protein powder, cherry juice, and a little bit of nut. That's a great, great combo. But so where do you where get do you that? Get cherry you can get Delicious. cherry juice concentrate Delicious. at Myers. Um, I forget the brand of it. You can get it at Target too. Um, but I found it was cheaper just to order a case of it because I use it every day. Um, they also have single serving packets of it, which is convenient. Um, so the other thing that I always add to it is Beet Boost, this is called. Um, oh, yeah. these, these places should all be giving me kickbacks, but they don't. Um, so this Beet Boost is a powdered beet. So beets are high in nitrates, which are converted to nitric oxide in our blood and actually help to be more efficient with oxygen utilization in our muscles. So something like this is a great pre-workout. Um, so actually the Red Wings use this as well as their pre-workout. So instead of using some of the horrible products like C4 or some of the other pre-workouts that are out there, they are 100% functional food based as a team. So they don't use any products that are not food based to enhance their performance, which is obviously important for drug testing, but this is another great product. So instead of cooking beets and dealing with beets, I just get the powder. There's also 35 tart cherries and six beets in every serving of this. So 